we've established that Audi's Quattro system is the absolute business if you're tearing through a Welsh forest. But how does that translate into the real world? Now, assuming you don't live on a Snowdonian hillside, is four-wheel drive really worth having on your road car? It's the battle of the transmission systems. Two at the front, two at the back, or four all over. We've got a rear-wheel drive BMW 3 Series, our Audi A4 Quattro, and a front-wheel drive Alpha 156. And we've got a couple of real-world experiments lined up to test them where it really counts. Now, when you're just pootling around town, it's difficult to tell which wheels the engine is driving. It's only when you begin to reach the car's limits that you find out. This Alfa Romeo is front-wheel drive. Take it to a greasy roundabout like this one, and it seems that things remain steady at about 20 miles an hour. But increase your speed, and oh, loads of understeer, and the car just washes out. No front end grip whatsoever. This 328 is a completely different proposition. It's rear wheel drive, so all the power is going to the back tyres, which leaves the front ones absolutely free just to steer. Tow it enough and you'll start to lose the back end. But at least the nose stays pointing in the right direction, so you won't be looking at any oncoming traffic. And if you've got the option of traction control, it'll automatically reduce the juice and tame the turn. My foot is absolutely flat on the floor and it simply refuses to misbehave which is exactly what you'd expect the Audi to do with its Quattro four-wheel drive system. So, let's put some more gas on, and... Oh, there we go, the nose just washes away with understeer, but not quite to the same extent as a front-wheel drive car. So, test number two. Imagine you're cruising along a country road at 50 miles an hour, singing along to your toppest tune. Now imagine there's been a mass breakout at the local zoo. A penguin, good grief! So, avoided the first hazard and the second, all understeer, but not enough to put penguin in peril. And that's the thing about 4x4. It's great for traction in a straight line, but once you reach the car's limits, it's good, but it's not a miracle worker. Now, one of the big misconceptions about rear-wheel drive cars is that when you come across an unexpected hazard, things can get a bit messy. Well, that's not quite the case. OK, you will get some oversteer, but if you keep powering through, because the front wheels are still pointing in the direction that you want to go and the power is pushing you forward from behind, you can propel yourself neatly out the other end. And no prizes for guessing that a front-wheel drive's tendency to understeer makes this the least tractable of our three. Oh, dog. Oh, understeer, Anna killed the penguin. But this isn't a criticism of Alphas. It's just that most front-wheel drive cars do tend to understeer more than others in emergency situations. Unless, of course, you yank the handbrake. So the bottom line, is four-wheel drive worth all the fuss? Well, it does offer more grip than a front-wheel drive car, but for my money, I take the rear-wheel drive BMW with its excellent traction control system that really inspires the most confidence.